Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. It is stinking cold. Actually, it's probably in the upper 30s right now, maybe low 40s. I don't know. I didn't look. I came out here because I want to move some more dirt, work on that backyard a little bit, get that leveled down some more, add in more layers, um, get that leveled up. We can't fill in this back section right yet because we still have to put that block wall up. But I can continue to work on getting all that high stuff, getting all that high stuff leveled down and brought out, you know, just leveling this all up. So that's what I was going to do. But it's a lot chillier and windier than what I was hoping it would be. So I'm not sure that I'm going to do that. One thing I do absolutely have to do today is I got to bring in more firewood. So you can see that our firewood supply is getting down we will not make it through Ooh, wrong way ha, love zoom we will not make it through the winter with what we have here we do have some more logs cut down below but i will get we have enough here for probably another month or so i will get that some of that taken in get us through the next several days it is warmer during the day, so I've been burning it a lot slower, which is nice. Uh, and, of course, I back it down overnight. So the only time that it's really uproaring is first thing in the morning to warm up the house again. And in the evening, usually Joe comes home from work and is cold. So um, we run it a little bit hotter then. So uh, you saw our dead four-wheeler in there. Forget, I don't actually know what's wrong with it. It's that's one of the ones that it's uh, there's always something wrong with it. But right now we have two trucks that are sort of running, a car that is not because that's the one that Joe hit the deer with, and we just haven't had it to get the radiator replaced. It's not a super expensive part, it's just the money's been going elsewhere right now. So, um, his let me do this his girlfriend is sitting right there and I say that lovingly but when we met that's what he referred to her as because he was absolutely in love with that truck and it is a pretty badass looking truck that we all love unfortunately she blew an engine the other week so uh, he's already replaced the engine in it once it's an 08 f350 she's gorgeous and he's taking good care of her, but he's replaced the engine once already. He's replaced the transmission once. Something, I don't know, 150,000, maybe 170,000 miles on? I don't remember. It may be closer to 200,000 at this point. I kind of quit keeping track when we moved up here because it was just, you got to run it, you got to run it. So um, she's got some mileage on it, but he said he's not going to bother replacing the engine this time. So... He's real sad about that. I don't I don't know what we're going to do, what he wants to do. I don't know if he's going to try to sell it, if he's going to let her sit there and decide that, you know, eventually we have a little bit of money, we'll get an engine. He's a mechanic, so he can do it. He works at a shop that I don't know if he can, uh, if he can work on it there or not, but yeah, he's real sad about that, but one thing I wanted to do, I want to check the chicken coop because, and isn't this the cutest coop? This was actually gifted to us, and the lady that had it, had her husband make it, is an artist, and it needs touched up, it needs repainted, but I'm just going to follow her lines because I think it's absolutely adorable. But I heard some chickens laying, squawking earlier. <gasps> hey guys! And, oh, we have two of them. Yay. The last two days we've gotten one from my white chicken from Hester. Um, so, yay. We're starting springtime. That's exciting. Um, but apparently, so the brown one is from my white chicken. And the light one, it's like a light peach color, is from one of the black ones. I'm just not sure which chicken it is. Or... No, it wouldn't be from the gray one, because she lays uh, dark brown. So, 
Joe and I had a little bit of time this weekend yesterday. He was up thawing out from emptying out a trailer into the containers yesterday and organizing down below. And so we had a little bit of time to do some talking. And I think we finally come up with a plan for the chickens and our next big project. And let's show you what we got going on. See our soil, isn't it lovely? It's clay with a whole lot of rock. We're actually on a shale bank. If you look, this is the trail that goes down below. And this is what our house is sitting on. Like we dug down until we got to shale and couldn't dig anymore. That's the, the um, trail that goes down below. And then that shale bank runs the whole way back underneath the house. So we have this space here that I started. It wasn't just me. Joe helped too. But I like running the tractor. I like leveling stuff. And we started it last year. And then the tractor broke down for a couple of months. And it was just a whole thing. But we're going to put the garage up here. That's going to be our next big project. That we're going to build a garage. And it's going to go this direction perpendicular to the house. And not exactly sure how big it is. I say one thing, he says something else. I said a 30 by 50. He said, no, that's bigger than the house is. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, you need space to work and space for your tools and space for storage and all that good stuff. So I don't know what we'll end up doing size wise, but long and short of it, this is where it's gonna go. And we have decided that that'll be the next big project. Um, the woodshed, will not remain there well it will but it won't it won't be in that form so we'll build the garage over here and then have the roof extend over it like a porch type thing and we'll put the wood up against the side of the the garage barn so we're not doing a pole barn we're not doing the tin we're going to do board and batten at least board initially so that it matches the house and then here on this front section, um, again, based on whatever size the garage ends up being, we're going to use this front section over in here to pretty much there and back to the, the garage. And we're going to turn this into a divided kennel space for the dogs. That way, if we need to go away for a day, we can. I don't need to worry about anything. Um, they'll have space and I'll be able to separate the males and the females. So I have two roosters. Sorry for the, I was watching them. I have two roosters and the one's trying desperately to do his job. And every time he mounts somebody, the other one comes over and chases them off. Now they each have their own hens. They, they've chosen their hens or their hens have chosen them. They're brothers. They were raised together. Uh, and actually that little black one that's in between them right now, that bantam, is the one that raised both of them. Hey, the wind's blowing the phone again. So, they're funny though. Like, they don't fight fight. They just don't want each other doing their thing. Um, so part of what I need to get done is I need to get that white scoop out of there. That is... Uh, it's the the wind scoop from a rig. If anybody watched the video a few weeks ago or last week, I guess it was, I don't know when it was. Um, the down in the, the, between the containers we have, okay, that's a hen he's fighting with. The red one's a hen. Those two go at it all the time. And I don't understand that either. She's got some serious attitude. She is just not interested in him for anything good. But anyway, sorry, back to what I was saying. I get sidetracked so easily, as you all know. Um, the sleeper cab of a rig is down between the containers. We use that as pig hut shelter for the pigs. Works out really well. When we had the pigs up in this wooded section... We use this, which is the wind deflector off of the rig. Hey guys, 
how are you? And it's really gross right now. It's cleaned out. Um, but we had this flipped upside down. Well, right side up. Flipped over from the way it is right now. And the pigs could go in and it was real good wind block. They stayed down here. This is that hole right there. There's a bit of a round dig out, dug out. That's where they were. And they loved it. So I want to get this out of here and down in the scrap pile it's fiberglass so um not really sure how we're going to get rid of it unless it's just a dumpster or whatever because it won't fit in the bed of the truck for joe to take to get rid of somewhere my little greenhouse talked about that the other day i'm thinking about flipping that over taking the cattle panel off flipping that over and turning it into chicken tractor or a chicken hut, maybe, for um, meat birds. So, we decided on what we're doing with the chickens. So, here's the backspace of where the garage is going to go. So, it'll be nice to have all of his tools up here, not in the house. Have some sort of organization, get some of the stuff out of the containers so that maybe we can start to get them turned into a barn space like it's supposed to. But for this year, the big project is the garage and the chicken yard. And real quick, while I'm here, just because I think this thing is the coolest. We found this back on our property. Our property has been drilled for oil for a long, 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 long time. We do not have the mineral rights, oil, gas, and mineral rights to the property. Apparently, that's not really a thing in New York that you can have. Um... But there is what we call the uh, wheelhouse out on the back side of the property. And it's a big shed that's got the actual wheel like this in it. It still has the ropes, you know, the pulley system and everything for running the oil wells, oil rigs. So this was an extra wheel that we had found outside of that wheelhouse. So we dragged it up. And somehow that's going to, I don't know if it's going to be a flower bed which I kind of like that idea. Joe wanted to incorporate it somewhere into like the support structure of the deck when we get the house done. I don't know what we're going to do with it, but I think it's just really cool. And it's part of the history of our property. So. We finally decided we're going to leave this triangle section here. Um, leave it alone right now. It will get cleared out eventually. And... We'll use that space for the cabins. I think that's the best use of that space. I like it. It makes me happy. So that's what we're going to do. Um, Joe appeases me a lot. We actually had that conversation this weekend where I'm like, I want to have a conversation. He said, why? We're just going to do what you want to do anyway. I'm like, well, what do you mean? He goes, there is no con conversing with you. He said, you just... That's oil. Um, he said, we just do what you want to do. You say this is what you want done. And I can't say no to you. Because I have to keep the peace in the house. And while he's partially right, he's not completely right. I'm not completely unreasonable. I like things my way. Um, I think everybody does. I don't think he realizes that I give in and flex as much as I think I do. So... And I don't think that he flexes quite as much as he thinks he does either. So, you know, the, the fun, fun aspects of being in a marriage. So, the other decision that we made was about this space over here. Um, this is our driveway. This is our main driveway coming up from our lane. And... We need to get more stone in here, but stone's expensive. It cost us $500 for one truck last year, well, $575 for one truck load. That, excuse me, did the bottom half of the driveway. So we need to get more up here, but we have all of this wooded space here. And again, it's like a nice little triangular space. I don't like chicken coops that are just small spaces. I like the chickens to be able to move. They like to peck, they like to scratch, they like to find all the stuff. 
So I think what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of this part of the area. I don't know exactly how far down we'll go, but we'll probably just come out a little ways in the grass and we'll put the coop here or maybe we'll put the coop down there. It depends on how it sits. We'll clean out some of this wooded section here and run fencing. It doesn't need to be a huge area, but run some fencing back through there. You'll see there's a bunch of trees down and there's tree stumps from when it was timbered a long, long time ago. That's not from our timbering. We didn't do anything up top when we timbered. Um, we did put a hurting on the lower portion of the property, but that's fine. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I'm back. Uh, I'll have to edit that all so it looks right, but dang, look at that view. Love it. Love, love, love it. Anyway, I did a real quick mad dash because I was over showing where the chickens are going to go. And I smelled the smoke from the wood stove. Well, I might be slightly paranoid now since the fire. And so I stopped the camera and ran into the house. Everything was fine. It was just I was upwind from the smoke. And, I mean, it's not doing a whole lot. So it was, I just happened to catch a whiff of it. And I got freaked out. So, anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, we are going to put the chickens over here. I kind of like them to be on the other side of the house just because, you know... I don't want it to be an out of sight, out of mind type thing, but I think if we clear out some of that down stuff and get some of the saplings and some of the lower branches of the trees so that they can't jump or fly up into it, because I don't necessarily want to clip wings. I will, but I'd rather not. So I think we'll just go back in to the woods a little bit, clear a path run some fence, permanent fence, and this will just be the permanent chicken area. So that's that plan. And then, like I said, the, uh, the garage, chickens first, then the garage. And then once the garage is in, then we can get the lumber for inside walls done or ordered and picked up. And then they'll have a place that they can dry out so that I wanted to just put the green wood straight up on the walls. Joe says no. He wants it to dry out. I don't care because while he's worried about the gap in between, we had wanted a log cabin to begin with, and that wasn't anything that we were able to budget out. So I'm like, well, we'll just put up the green wood, and when it dries out, we'll get the gap, and then we can go back through and chink it, and it'll give us the look we were looking for. I don't always get what I want. Don't listen to him, okay? He likes to talk sometimes. I'm spoiled. There's absolutely no doubt about it. He takes good care of me, but I don't always, always get what I want. So here's another cool thing that we found on the property. It is the plow from when they were trenching for uh, running the pipelines for the oil wells, oil drilling. Um, it's a plow that you hook on the back of a D6, I think is what he said that it was on. Um, so again, this is just something that's really cool. Um, I don't know how old everybody is, but if you have kids that are of the age of watching Phineas and Ferb, doesn't it look like Perry the Platypus? Like, I think I should just paint it. I mean, it's got its eyeballs, and it's got that snout. I think I ought to paint it to look like Perry the Platypus. This is another thing that Joe had talked about incorporating maybe as a support for the front deck. Or as a corner post or something and then you know the nose would be down in and then all of this cutout section could be flowers you know I don't know I don't know what we'll do with it but again it's part of the history of the property and it's not a typical yard ornament which to me makes it really cool I don't follow the normal I don't follow the typical um, I like designs, you know, the last thing that I followed as far as like interior designs, everybody was doing everything gray and while it's pretty and initially I was like, yeah, okay. 
then everybody did it. And so I'm like, no, I don't want that. I don't, I don't like doing what everybody else does. So, um, briefly showed everybody the pig roaster from a distance the other day. This is, it's on his trailer. He's got racking here for the firewood. This happens to be applewood right now. Very, very well seasoned. Um, but he took 250 gallon tank or a 500 gallon. I don't remember what it was. This was made before he and I got together, but it is in fact a pig roaster. It is for wood. He took the plasma cutter and cut in the words piggy and they actually light up. There's, he's got some little red blinking lights under there well it says piggy roast so but that lights up and i don't know if i can open this oh i can so this holds a pair of 250 pound hogs nicely um it's set up for wood burning only we use this oh lord that's heavy I'll close it up after I have the camera turned off. But you put the fire, or you put the wood in this door under here and stoke it up from there. Um, he modified this when we got married because we did all of our own food. I love to cook, and I like to cook in bulk, so that was nothing. But he ran two propane lines, two burners in there, and we used that as our oven because the oven for the venue that we were at was not big enough and I didn't have a catering team, so like everything had to be made ahead of time and then put in to warm up. So this was our warming box oven setup. This stuff is all so heavy. I should have him here to show it to you, and I should have this thing on a tripod. I don't. One of these ends is a grill. I think this is just a warming box end, and the other end is a grill. I don't remember how it goes. It's been a while since we've used it, and we never actually, I don't know what that end is. We never actually used the ends of it. But the way he has it set up is when it's in full gear and it's burning, smoke comes out of the tail. Good grief. There we go. And smoke comes out of the ears. So if you're looking at it from this, there's your eyes, there's your ears, and it's got a little piggy tail on the backside. Uh, needs a tire. It works good. Um, we'll do a pig roast this summer for the fire departments that responded for us. And so this will work out really well. Sorry, I'm trying to close this thing. and I'm just not strong enough to do it myself. Well, I'm not strong enough to do it myself one-handed. But, so that's his pig roaster. I'm going to get off of here, guys. I hope everybody has a wonderful Monday. I guess it's warming up enough that I can go uh, get on the tractor and take care of loading my firewood in and then play in the dirt a little bit. By the time I'm done loading firewood, it should be warm enough that I won't freeze on the tractor. So those are our plans. I'm putting it out here on YouTube so that I can't change my mind because that's one of Joe's biggest gripes is I change my mind all the time. I'm a Libra. Can't help it. I sit on something and the longer I sit on it, the more I think it through and I'm like, oh, well, this will work or this won't work or that doesn't make any sense or we should do it some other way or whatever. So it's out here on YouTube. We're going to do the garage gonna do the chicken coop and then we'll do the garage and then in the spring we'll work on the inside of the house and yeah that's the plans so um like i said you guys have a great monday i'm gonna go get busy now and hit the button hit like hit the subscribe hit the little bell follow along we're just living the dream, guys. Like, literally living the dream. Not in a negative way like everybody else says. We're busting ass, but we're happy doing it. So, I will talk to y'all later. Have a great one. Bye.